As I look to nature's beauty Dazzled am I Knowing everything calls on you The Lord Most High Alameen, all praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Creator, nourisher, cherisher, sustainer, provider, protector, curer the one in whose hands lies absolute control of every aspect of existence. We praise him, we declare his greatness, we glorify him, and usalli wa usallimu ala nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbi ajma'in. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon all the previous messengers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all and their companions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his blessed household and all of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Say Ameen. Ameen. Those who are listening at home too, as well as those who may listen to this later on. May Allah bless us and our offspring and may Allah grant us Jannatul Firdaus. The day he takes us away, may he have mercy on us. My brothers and sisters, throughout this day, you have heard various names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all these names are connected to qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they instill within us the awe, they instill within us that greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We begin to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a unique way that is actually the correct way of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to humankind, if I say, I love you, it could mean a million things. That same statement could mean, could mean, I just want to use you. It can mean that. So many times you have young men going up to young women and suddenly just saying, I love you. And that means I just want to use you. That's exactly what it means sometimes. But when you say I love you in the true sense, you don't want to hurt someone. You don't want to disrespect them. You don't want to dis please them. If you really love someone, you will be conscious of their feelings as human beings I'm talking about. So if I say I love you, my brother, or I love you, my sister, and I hope I'm talking here to someone whom I'm supposed to be saying that to. And if you love them, even if you love them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they do something wrong, you will want to correct them in the best possible way because you love them. You love them for the sake of Allah such that you want to see goodness. You want to see goodness for them, but at the same time, you don't want to hurt their feelings. So you might want to tell them, you know what, uh, I saw this happening and I saw that happening. I think it would be better if you didn't do this because if you don't stop doing this, I think this will happen, that will happen. You've chosen your words because you love the person. You don't love them, you don't care for them. You don't even bother correcting them. This is why I tell the young people out there, when mom or dad or anyone corrects you, you need to know they love you. That's the reason why they are telling you what they are telling you. If they did not love you, they wouldn't tell you what they are telling you. They wouldn't be bothered. How many of us sometimes we see things going wrong. We're not even bothered. We carry on. We walk because it's got nothing to do with us. According to us, Muslim, that's never the case. At least you make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, guide this person. Oh Allah, soften their heart. Oh Allah, let them see the path, etc. So when we see things that are wrong, the first thing we pray to Allah, we call out to Allah. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Protect me, guide me, my offspring, etc. The person I'm seeing doing wrong, help them, guide them, uh, show them the path, make it easy for them to tread that path, etc. This is a genuine feeling. So one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I spoke about this last week, I'm going to say it again, the name Al-Wadud. Al-Wadud is the one who is most loving. Al-Wadud, the one who is most loving. Allah is most loving. Wallahi, He loves you so much that your parents can never compete with that love. He loves you more than your parents, more than anyone else. 
That is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you were to know how much Allah loves you, you would never lose hope in His mercy, no matter what you've done. And if you were to know how severe the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, you would never want to do something wrong. But I want to talk for a moment about the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which will come as a result of learning His names and His qualities. When you know Allah loves you, and you know that He cares for you. He, you know that He's given you your breathing, your nose, your eyes, your ears, your everything that you've got, the faculties that you have, the organs that you have. And you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. You love Him back. You want to do things. You want to give Him. The problem with us is a few things that we don't have in life, a few challenges that we face in our lives, make us forget all the other gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken away five things from you, for example, we start concentrating on those five and we become despondent. Well, Allah doesn't love me. Why? Because I'm not a rich man. And Allah doesn't love me. Why? Because I'm not well. My health is failing. And Allah doesn't love me. Why? Because I lost my limbs. Allah doesn't love me because I lost my child. No, no, you are, you are losing out if you think that way. Allah loves you because He's given you so much. He's given you so many opportunities. He's given you your legs, your feet. He's allowed you to walk, to breathe. Your heartbeat is a sign of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The food that you have, no matter what, is a sign of the love of Allah. Because Allah says in the Quran, if I were to punish the people, based on their sins or their oppression, there would be no one left on earth. They would be punished such that مَا تَرَكَ عَلَىٰ ظَهْرِهَا مِن Allah says towards the end of Surah Fatir, that just before Surah Yasin, if you want to check up the verse, if we were to punish people because of their sins or because of their oppression, nothing would be remaining on earth, nothing walking, because everything would be destroyed with our anger. But Allah loves us and Allah gives us a chance and another chance. And guess how many chances? Infinity. Your father will give you five chances, then he'll do something. Your father will probably get upset. I get so many emails every other day telling me I want to marry someone. Allah allows it, but my dad doesn't allow it. Okay, I received one email, two emails, five emails, 10, 20, 100, 1000. Now I've lost count the same email from totally different people. I want to marry someone. Allah allows it. My dad doesn't allow it. My, why? Well, I tell you something. He loves himself more than he loves you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the reason. Reputation. I'm worried about what will people say? Well, set a trend. People will talk. Oh, if they could do it, well, let's do it as well. But because you're worrying about people, you're not worried about Allah. The more conscious you are of Allah, the more you lead a pleasant life, the less you fear the rest. And the more you fear the rest, the less conscious you become of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you need to choose. I'm either worried about the people or I'm worried about Allah. If I'm worried about Allah, I won't be worried about the people when I have to do something correct. I will lead by example. But if I'm worried about the people, I won't even read my salah because I'll say these people are going to see I'm a Muslim and they might harass me. Subhanallah, let them harass you. The person harassing you might get hidayah and guidance. I know of so many cases where people have gone in to try and diffuse something that a Muslim might have been doing in terms of goodness. And they come out with such a great lesson that they are moved and they even turn to Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. So this is Allah and Allah is powerful. Allah is almighty. Allah is loving. When you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't want to displease him. So it develops your consciousness. If I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want to get up in the morning because I love Allah. You know, they say you fear Allah. Yes, the fear of Allah is a part of the faith. I always like to use the deeper meaning of the term taqwa to say we fear the punishment of Allah. When Allah says you fear Allah, فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Don't fear them, fear me, Allah is saying, if you are true believers. That is referring to the punishment of Allah. You fear the displeasure of Allah. 
You fear Allah in the sense that you don't want to do anything that will result in your own punishment. And this is why the term taqwa refers to an taj'ala baynaka wa bayna adhab Allahi wiqaya. The term taqwa, some translate it as piety, some say fear Allah, some say the consciousness of Allah, that's the one I prefer. And the deeper meaning is to create a barrier between you and the punishment of Allah by fulfilling that which He has asked you and staying away from that which He has asked you to stay away from. That is the consciousness, that is taqwa. So if you were to fear Allah's punishment and you were fearing to displease Allah, it's out of love. It's out of love. That is Al-Wadud. Allah loves you. Allah has provided you. I want each one of us to make a note of something. Write down, inshallah, later today or at some stage soon, what Allah has bestowed you, has bestowed you with, what He's given you. So you have your sight, you have your nose, your breathing, you have your brain, you have your heart. Imagine you were to be charged one P for every heartbeat you'd become bankrupt. I promise you 36,000 heartbeats a day, every single day, you would have to pay forever and ever. Allah says, no problem. I don't need a payment, but all I need you to do, you lead a clean, clear life and you become a better person and you fulfill your obligations and you will enjoy not only this life, but when you get to me, I promise you, I'll give you a much better life. The eternal life will be absolutely beautiful because Allah is Al-Wadud. So you make one mistake, two mistakes, three mistakes, four mistakes, five, 10, 20, 50, 100, 1000. Where's the cap? There's no cap. But the cap is when you die. Allah will accept the repentance of a slave for as long as they've not arrived at the point of death. Finally, when the soul departs from the body at that juncture, the door of repentance is closed. So turn before it is too late. And the beauty of it all is none of us know when we are going to die. So for that reason, what is of importance is for us to turn to Allah now because I don't have a guarantee for the next breath, for the next moment. I could or any one of us could suffer a huge, massive heart attack and suddenly drop dead. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawbah before that happens and may he protect us from that. Ameen. So this was just the beginning talking about the consciousness of Allah, the greatness of Allah, the love of Allah. Don't ever doubt that Allah loves you. Don't ever doubt that Allah is become so happy when you ask his forgiveness. When you actually seek Allah's forgiveness, he becomes so, so happy. There is a description in several narrations of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I always feel ashamed to say, imagine I am saying, Oh Allah, forgive me. And Allah is saying, look, that's my worshiper seeking forgiveness. He actually boasts to the angels. Look at my worshiper. One might say, why does he have to boast? I tell you because shaitan promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's going to lead mankind astray. And Allah says, no, I will forgive him for as long as he seeks forgiveness. Shaitan can lead you astray all your life. And at the end you say, oh Allah, forgive me. And Allah says, you see, I told you, he's going to finally turn back to me. That's what it is. That's why Allah says he boasts to the angels when someone turns back to him. Imagine, would you like to please Allah? Turn back to him, turn back to him. Seek forgiveness. Allahumma ghfir lana dhunubana. Oh Allah, forgive our sins. My brothers and sisters, another powerful name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is Al-Hakim. He is the All-Wise. The All-Wise means He knows what you don't know. That is Al-Alim as well. He's the knower. But when He declares something, He knows why He has declared it that way. That is wisdom. This is why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about rules and regulations in the Quran and some of the rules of the Sharia, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala normally or usually in a lot of those verses, you will find the end of it. Hakim, Or something to do with hikmah and wisdom. The name of Allah, Allah is almighty and Allah is wise. He's wise because this rule that he just told you now, he knows that it is applicable in your life. Now I want to tell you what a believer is all about. 
A believer is he who lays his trust in Allah. A believer is he who surrenders to Allah. He who believes in the last day, Aman to Billah, I believe in Allah. I believe in the angels. I believe in the prophets. I believe in the books. I believe that I am created. I'm going to go back one day. There's going to be a last day. I believe that I'm going to be answerable for everything I've done. I believe that there is heaven and hell. I believe that good and bad fate is decreed by Allah, but that must not make me lay like I said in the earlier session this morning my brothers and sisters a believer is such that he knows when Allah says something I don't have a choice I believe I surrender and I know it is better for me pause for a moment think to yourself when Allah says get up for Salatul Fajr Wallahi the benefit is not only spiritual it is actually medical to start with. It is actually physical to begin with. And thereafter, everything else, medicine will arrive at a conclusion years down the line that is healthy to get up early. When I was young, I used to hear early to bed, early to rise makes Jack this, that and that and the other. Have you heard that? And I used to tell myself, I'm not Jack. Subhanallah. I'm not Jack. I'm Ismail. So, Early to bed, early to rise is an Islamic teaching. Do you know that? If you've got nothing better to do after Salatul Isha, unless you're engaged in something constructive, don't waste your time watching movies, Man United and who else is playing today? Chelsea. Wow. The fact that you're sitting here, Subhanallah, I saw a brother just now with a phone and I thought he's videoing us. He's busy watching Man United and Chelsea. May Allah forgive us. Subhanallah, may Allah forgive us. But at the same time, we know that when Allah has declared something, Wallahi, it is the best for us. Nothing can be better than what Allah declares. So I was saying when you get up early for Salatul Fajr, Allah knows why he's saying that. You need to. I was saying medicine will arrive at the conclusion that this is beneficial. That is beneficial. And if you look at it, it's actually the way of Muhammad وسلم, and it's actually what Allah has taught. Look at the fasting two days in the week. It's amazing. Now you have the medical fraternity confirming that you know what? It's healthy for you. Fast two days a week. And we did not used to do it. Now we're doing it because I heard it on a BBC documentary. BBC documentary, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Yes, that's correct. But we had it BC, you know, a long time back, Subhanallah. Long ago we had it. It came as a gift, fast. It's a sunnah. It's not farad to fast twice a week, but it's a sunnah. If you were to please Allah, you do over and above your obligation. Imagine when you love someone, what do you do? They ask you, please give me one pound. You love them so much, you say, take 10 pounds. Hang on, hang on, come back, take 100 pounds, go. Why? <laughs> Allahu Akbar, I hope it's halal, by the way. May Allah forgive us. I love you so much, I give you whatever you want. What do you want? Take it, go. What do you want in return? A lot of the times, it comes with strings. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it does not come with strings. Allah gives you much more than you ask Him. Do you know sometimes Allah gives you that which you haven't even asked Him for and He blesses you with it, one after the other. Imagine, so many of a majority of our gifts, we haven't asked for them. Allah blessed us with them. Now I tell you, when we engage in our acts of worship, we just fulfill the farad. Farad meaning that which is obligatory. We do the obligation and we run away. If you really love Allah, you take your time doing the obligation and after that you sit and say, now hang on, now this is from me. Allahu Akbar, I'm giving you example of salah. The same applies to fasting, the same applies to charities. You give a little charity and you say, that's my zakah. But you know what? Hang on, I love Allah. And I love Allah enough for me to be able to give. Let me give 10%. What's 10%? You know what? It's a very small percentage. Do you agree? See, the yes is very quiet. Because we're thinking I have 10 million, I'm going to have to give away one whole million if I say yes. So two and a half percent is very little. Do you agree? 
Oh, that was much louder. Subhanallah. We made the percentage smaller. Well, that is farad. That is farad. But at the same time, meaning that's compulsory. But at the same time, give over and above that. You love Allah. Allah gives you more than what you ask for. So give him back more than what he asks for. So Allah will be pleased with you. Remember, Allah is all wise. Going back to this name, Al-Hakim. Sometimes rules and regulations, the young people say, why do I have to read Salah? In the Arabic language, sometimes a revert Muslim or someone who's just come back onto the path and they say, it's so difficult to learn the Arabic language. Why do I need to pray only in Arabic? And I always say, who said so? You can pray in any language you want because prayer, what is the meaning of it? It could be referring to dua or supplication. That's the prayer. If you ask someone who's not a Muslim to pray, by default, they probably will say, Oh Lord, help this person, help that person, etc. You can say that in any language. That's known as dua. It's not known as salah. It's not known the five daily prayers. So you can pray before you eat, when you want to ask Allah for something in any language, no matter what it is, even in your own dialect. Even if you don't say it out, Allah already knows it from your heart. But when it comes to the five daily, what we term salah, we don't have a word to refer to it besides prayer. So that's why we say the five daily prayers. But in actual fact, it's, it's a whole set of actions and words that starts with the takbir, meaning Allahu Akbar, and it ends with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. That entire unit of prayer or those units of prayer, they are uniquely in Arabic. One of the reasons is, look, take a look at the Bible, the Torah, the Talmud, a lot of the previous scriptures. There is a debate in those faiths about the most authentic copy. Where is the most authentic of this book? They will tell you, uh, you know what, we don't know. Was it in Hebrew? Was it in Aramaic? Even that is a debate. Why? We believe as Muslimin that people adjusted the word of God to suit them, for them to be able to understand it. We say, you adjust yourself to be able to understand the word of God. That's the difference. So once you accept Islam, you have to, whether you like it or not, contribute towards the protection of the scripture by actually memorizing a small portion of it. Can I see by show of hands, how many of you have memorized the first chapter of the Quran known as Surah Al-Fatiha? Put your hands high up in the air. I think that's almost everyone. You can put your hands down. Don't you feel proud of the fact that even though you may not know the Arabic language, you have contributed towards the protection of this book by memorizing at least one chapter. How many of you know more than one chapter? Even if it is another short chapter, put up your hand. Same number of hands. Can you see that? So all of you know two or three. Don't you feel honored? It's the word of Allah. Haven't you done something great? How many of you do not understand Arabic? Put up your hand high in the air. Similar number of hands. MashaAllah. Are you seeing the point I'm proving to you? This is Allah. He knows why he told you Arabic. He knows. And this is why the Quran, there is no debate about its authenticity among the Muslimin. There is no debate about its authenticity. It's the Quran, whether you go to China or whether you go to Argentina. Don't ask me why I chose Argentina. It just came out of my mouth. <laughs> but subhanallah, it's the Quran. It's the same. That's the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers, my sisters, Allah is wise. He knows why he did that. The same applies when it comes to things that happen in your life. So I spoke about rules and regulations, okay? And I told you, any rule and regulation, Allah knows why it's there. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you have to have, for example, a certain dress code. MashaAllah, all religions have dress codes. All schools have dress codes. In fact, so many places have a dress code. I've even seen dress codes in clubs and pubs when they tell you strictly this dress and strictly. Have you seen it? Even weddings have it nowadays. So when Islam has it, we've got a problem. But when anyone else has it, there's no problem. I adopt it. I, I will go and get it tailored. I'll spend a thousand quid to do what? Because you know what? Someone's getting married. They might just see me with these nice clothes and they might want to marry me too. You know, may Allah forgive us. But that's what happens. So we did it. Dress code. Amazing. For Allah, we complained. But Allah says, I know why I'm telling you this. You need to cover yourself in a correct way, modest. Dress modestly so that a person, he doesn't abuse you. Do you know what happens normally? Someone sees something they like 
and sometimes they know they cannot have it and sometimes they know that it's going to really be impossible and so on but because they want it it's not a need they want it and they can they end up doing something wrong so allah says had you just been a bit modest on both sides People normally blame the women. No, that's not true. We blame both sides. And a lot of the times people say women should dress modestly. The guys, I've seen worse with the, with the guys. I've actually seen in a masjid when I was about to go into sujood, someone else's backside in front of me. Astaghfirullah. I had to break my salah and walk away because why? I, I can't put my head on the ground for Allah where there's somebody's behind showing. Astaghfirullah. So guys, you know, those trousers, actually, I can show you where the hips are, please. If you don't know where they are. And we might be distributing free belts out there. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Allah is wise. He knows why he's telling you these things. You don't just follow the trends because everyone's doing that. You don't just do what they do. Allah knows he's telling you something. He is Al Hakim. He is the wise. He knows why he is telling you because he doesn't want you to suffer in another way. And then people say, okay, a few moments ago, brother Ali was asking me about, am I allowed to ask a sister if I see her? Uh, to give me the number of her brother or her wali or her guardian. I may never see her again, etc. Wow. Wow. Good question. Good question. And then he says, well, is the sister allowed to give a brother a number to say, you know, uh, you know, I may the opposite. Good question. You might want to know the answer. Perhaps brother Ali might put it up online a little bit later. However, Allah has declared these in order for us to be protected. That's all. There is a guy whose intention is just to bed you. I'm using that word, okay? And guess what he does? He pretends it's just marriage. It's clean. Wallahi, this is my number. And you message. And he charms. Because why? I love you. I'm sure you've heard me say, how many of us... Okay, let's be honest. Let's try this, okay? You know when, you, when you're on WhatsApp or somewhere and someone sends you something and you just say lol, 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 right? How many of us have used lol and we haven't really laughed. It means laugh out loud, right? How many of us have used lol and we haven't really laughed? Please put up your hand as high as ever. Every one of us. That means how many of us would be using I love you and you haven't even laughed. May Allah forgive us. May Allah forgive us. It's possible, isn't it? Guilty us. We don't even want to answer that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So people can tell you, they can charm you, they can say things they don't really mean. And shaitan is there to spice it up, pepper it up. You're looking forward to it. And the next best thing or the worst thing is you've been abused in such a way that you blame him, he blames you. And the blame game doesn't help anyone because it was both of you. That's what it was. And then you lead, you go your way, he goes his way and that's it. You feel so spent. May Allah forgive us. This is why Allah says, Al-Hakim, he's the wise. He knows you want to sit, make sure you sit properly. Make sure you have a little bit of good company. That's why Allah says it, Al-Hakim, he's the wise. So I told you regarding rules and regulations, Allah is the most wise. He knows why he says things. When alcohol for a Muslim is prohibited, he knows why. For example, when this is prohibited, that's prohibited. People say, why is it prohibited? You might not understand it now, but I tell you, you will see the general movement of the globe in such a negative direction that you begin to appreciate the rules of Islam. You begin to appreciate the regulations. Later on, this thing protects me. These rules make me feel liberated. Whereas the world makes me feel enslaved as free as I, it may seem it is. It's actually enslaving me to a degree. We respect everybody's choice. They can choose what they want, but we encourage them to say, you know what? Learn to be disciplined. Learn to be of values and morals. Learn to behave yourself. Because Allah knows why He asks you to do that. And then the last segment of my talk is going to be speaking about the wisdom of Allah in the tests and the challenges that He has kept in our lives. Sometimes you went through something huge. You lost a child. That's an example. Allah is wise. He knows why you lost the child. If you were to bear patience, the hadith says, Ajaban li amri mu'min. And the Quran speaks about sabr. <laughs> Indeed, Allah will recompense those who bore sabr or who were patient in an unlimited fashion. 
Allah will give you unlimited. So Allah wanted you to go through patience. You lost your child. The child went to heaven waiting for you to come. The child will actually try to intercede on your behalf. That's my mother. That's my father. And perhaps that intercession will help you. And at the same time, what that child, what you need to understand is Allah wants you to endure in a way that you get rewarded with paradise. Maybe sometimes our salah might not be absolutely perfect. We might have a lot of other flaws, but Allah's tested you with something major. And as a result of that major test, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you paradise because you accepted it. You took it. So if Allah had not taken the child away, what might have happened? It might have happened. We don't know the future. Allah knows it. What might have happened is the child might have grown up to be so disobedient that you start praying, Oh Allah, I'm so, so upset. Why did you even give me this child? So Allah says, before that would ever happen, we took the child away. Evidence of this is mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf, where Allah speaks about the child that Al-Khidr had executed. And Allah says, Musa alayhi salam asked, why did you do that? So he says, وَأَمَّا الْغُلَامُ فَكَانَ أَبَوَاهُ مُؤْمِنَيْنِ فَخَشِيْنَا فَخَشِيْنَا أَنْ يُرْهِقَهُمَا طُغْيَانًا وَكُفْرًا فَأَرَدْنَا أَنْ يُبْدِلَهُمَا رَبُّهُمَا خَيْرًا خَيْرًا مِنْهُ زَكَاةً وَأَقْرَبَ رُحْمًا As for that child that was executed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to bestow the parents of that child with a better child than that particular child this is a summary of the translation Allah says the parents were good so Allah took that child away in order to replace the child with another child who would be much more obedient, much the coolness of the eyes. It's good to have children. What do I always say in a dua? May Allah bestow those who have children to have children who will be the coolness of their eyes. We use that term a lot. That means when you look at them, you're happy. Mashallah, this is my son, my daughter. They may not be exactly as you want, but for as long as they are within what Allah wants, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, thank Allah. There are others who are struggling in a different way. People are challenged by their children. So my brothers, my sisters, Allah is wise. He knows why he took your son away, your daughter away. He took your health away. It is such that on the day of judgment, when a person who bore patience regarding their sickness sees the reward of that patience, they will wish that they had remained sick for a longer period of time to have accumulated much more reward. Amazing. Allah is wise. He knows. Be patient. Surrender to the decree of Allah. Do whatever you can in terms of your capacity. But remember, the final decree belongs to Allah. That's what it is. He knows why he did what he did. People say, why is Allah making people suffer across the globe? Well, perhaps he wants to give them paradise. Many of us, when we are not suffering, we've forgotten Allah. And the minute something comes into our lives that entails a little bit of suffering, we quickly turn to Allah. We start making tahajjud. You know what is tahajjud? Yes, we do, don't we? The prayer very early before the dawn prayer, the, uh, the voluntary prayer, we get up and we cry just because something went wrong in your life. That's what it is. Diagnose something. Allah is wise. He knows why he did that for you and to you because he knows you need to turn before you return. Turn to Allah before you return to Allah. We know that. Right? My brothers and my sisters, this is amazing. This is a gift of Allah. The fact that he's telling us, I am wise. I'm all wise. I know why I've done this. Sometimes he keeps you poor because in that poverty, there is closeness to him that you don't know there is. Some people become wealthy. The first thing they do, adultery, moving from prostitute to post. May Allah forgive us. It's a fact. It's a disaster we're facing today. If that's the case, Allah takes the barakah away from your wealth. He takes your wealth away. What happened? I couldn't afford sin anymore. At least Allah kept you away from it. You follow? He was wise. This is why they say when a person sins, automatically he's taking his barakah away. He's taking his sustenance away by snatching the blessings away from it. So if you want wealth, 
you just need to obey Allah. If you want blessings, you just need to obey Allah and be persistent. Because I remember a young man, I think I said this the last time, when I told him, if you really want the help of Allah, you need to start off by seeking Allah's forgiveness and your prayer. Five daily prayer. If you start that five daily prayer, I promise you Allah will come in your direction. And I guarantee that because Allah guarantees it. Three days later, he comes to me, he says, Hey, I've been reading Salah for three days. Nothing's come. I say, brother, you've been disobeying Allah for 30 years. Why don't you try out 40 days, inshallah? And you know, brother, I don't want to seem to be funny, but you seem like the type that when Allah gives you what you want, you're going to stop praying again. So Allah might keep you exactly where you are. Sometimes we pray to Allah, Oh Allah, I've got the sickness, take it away. May Allah grant cure to all those who are sick and ill. Say, Ameen. So Allah keeps you in a certain way because he knows that you know what this person if I were to take them out of it, they will show ingratitude and they are not going to they're going to stop all this goodness. And I love this. Look at my worshiper. He's crying for me. He's getting up early morning for me. I love him so much. Look at him. He's he's pleading with me. I love this condition. I want to keep him in this condition for two or three more years. And you're like, what? What did I just hear? Well, you're the closest you ever were to me. Imagine Allah saying that. And it's a fact. That's why Allah says he's wise. He knows what he's just done to you. He knows what he has just done to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us such that we do not wait for calamity to strike before we turn to him. Rather, start inching towards Allah. When I say inching, I mean start moving towards Allah. If you want to correct yourself, do it now. If you want to change your life, do it now for the better. If you want to become a person who is more polite to those whom you live with, do it today. I call on all brothers and sisters to learn to get along with one another, to live and let live, to respect one another within the home. Spouses, I call on you to resolve your matters. Allah is wise. He knows why he brought you together. Don't just want out because of one or two mistakes your spouse has made. Yes, if it is unbearable, you do have a way out as a mercy of Allah. But at the same time, my brothers and sisters, learn to respect those you live with to begin with. I try to avoid saying in-laws and so on, but I have to say it. You have a daughter-in-law, you have a son-in-law, you have a mother-in-law, you have a father-in-law, you have in-laws, you have various people, you may even have outlaws. But at the same time, please respect them. Please respect them. Understand each other. And it is two-way traffic. I can never ever say one person is wrong and the other one is right. Wallahi, it takes two to tango. Learn to respect one another. Beautiful words. Don't expect too much from each other. We die because our expectations are like up in the ceiling. You know, when you don't expect too much, whatever you get, you really are thankful. But when your expectations are up in the ceiling, even if the person has got halfway there, miraculously, you won't appreciate it because no matter what they do, it's simply not good enough. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon us his mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. May Allah grant us ease. My brothers and sisters, this is why when we say the names of Allah, look at the various aspects of this name, the wise. Al-Hakim. Understand that Allah is the wise. Allah knows what he's doing and Allah is in absolute control. He knows he's in control. He's in control of everything. He knows he's given you and I a certain capacity which he will question us regarding. So when Allah's given you a capacity to do something, then only will he question you. I gave you the capacity. What did you do with it? If he did not give you the capacity, he won't question you. This is something unique. The questions on the day of judgment will only be how did you use the choices we gave you? That's it. No other questions. If we did not give you a choice, we won't ask you about it. My brothers and sisters, I call on every one of us to look into our hearts and to try and deal with the jealousy we have for a brother or a sister or anyone out there and work on it. Start praising that person. The hatred you have for someone. Why is it there? deal with it. It's a burden on you more than it is on the other. The backbiting we engage in. Stop it. It doesn't help you. Say good things about people behind their backs. The gossiping. Wallahi, replace it with the recitation of the Quran. Replace it with the dhikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah. Stop this gossip. 
When you forward messages, don't forward dirty messages. That might just be the last message you forwarded before you've died. It has already happened to others. We don't want it to be repeated with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me an opportunity to cleanse my heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me an opportunity to deal with the sicknesses and the diseases of the heart. Many of us become envious of others in a bad way. Let that not happen. Because definitely we are the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we need we will be returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we need to praise him call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using all his names and qualities aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina muhammad can i i just want to do my little watch i'm going to go to toilet okay Brothers and sisters, uh, some of you who might be following me on Facebook and Twitter, you might have noticed that I went live today a little bit earlier in the day. What has happened is, mashallah, for the last few years, starting from 2010, I started posting uh, posts on Facebook and Twitter, quotes that are related to people's lives and what we go through, a little motivational moment, a little motivational moment. Perhaps you may be going through something and it gives you a little bit of courage it guides you perhaps it makes you it helps you make a decision it perhaps improves you in your character and your conduct and i've tried to keep it such that it cuts beyond a lot of barriers the barriers of faith etc so you may find a lot of non-muslims as well benefiting from it what has happened is within minutes of putting up a tweet or a post you start liking it you a lot of you who follow there are so many likes that's very very encouraging and what happens as a result of this is i started becoming encouraged that things started falling into place with a lot of you asking me to compile this as a result we've compiled it mashallah and i thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this has happened this has happened the most liked or the top posts this is where you're involved if you liked it more it is there we've compiled it 500 of these quotes into a book known as motivational moments inshallah motivational moments by mufti Meng. may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us i thank you all for participating in that and i really would like you to benefit from it and it is it all belongs to you inshallah we have a web page where you can get your copy motivational moments 500.com it there might be a lot of traffic today because we've just launched this ebook today but Inshallah, you can learn everything about that book on that particular page, Motivational Moments 500. And I leave you with a short clip regarding this particular book. Jazakumullah khair wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.